continued before uh, we'll we'll try to finish today for another 30 to 45 minutes no how long you have uh, you know you have taken before uh, it is around 45 minutes 45 uh, okay yeah but it was said at 8 o'clock isn't it yeah because uh, initially we had some problem uh, joining the link so uh, that is where 10 10 minutes it got delayed uh, but uh, what time is it now back, back there uh, it is around 9:20 pm 9:20 oh yeah, okay got it yeah. fine um, so uh, we now have, have a basic understanding of the http protocol um, in http request and response we have there are different HTTP methods which you will get whenever you are trying to uh, investigate or inspect the application traffic. Like, for example, get, post, head, put, delete, options. So these are basically different kind of methods on how you are trying to fetch the remote resource on, on the remote server. And as, as per these requests, there is a response which comes back from the remote server. So those are basically represented by your HTTP codes. There are basically five series of codes, 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500 series. 100 basically represents, 100 basically represents informational request 200 represents successful that the request is successful 300 denotes redirection 400 is client side error and 500 is server side error so now that we have a complete overview understanding of the application traffic flow and basic of HTTP, let us dive into understanding load balancing. When we talk about load balancing, let's assume that this is the user who's connected to internet and then he's trying to reach out to a web server. This web server might at the backend be communicating to a database server. So this is a specific infra where there is no load balancing. Now, the question comes is, what exactly is load balancing? So basically load balancing is the entire intent of virtualizing the service which is present on the server. So basically let us assume I have this web server with this IP address and it is listening on port 80. So what I'm doing is instead of this one IP address, there might be different multiple web server. Web server two, one, like web server three. So instead of all these IP addresses, what I'm doing is I'm trying to virtualize this service and have one single representation, IP address and port. So a more basic definition is to balance the load across a physical bunch of servers and make those servers look like one, one big server to the outside world. So to outside world, it is only just one IP address, but at this IP address might be configured on your load balancer. And at the back end from in here, the traffic is being sent to different web servers be it web server one, web server two, or web server three. Now the primary drivers of this load balancing are, first is scalability. Next is high availability. And third is predictability. So when I talk about these different terms, let's un try to understand what do all these terms actually mean. So when I say scalable, let me think it from a server admin perspective. 
Okay. Let us say that I have one IBM server which has two CPU cores and let's say 120 GB RAM, 4 TB hard disk. This has some limited resources. And I being a developer, I have designed an e-commerce website. For example, www.test-corp.com. This is my e-commerce website, which I have launched, wherein I am selling multiple different products. So after designing this application, I go and tell my friend, hey, buddy, why don't you try and try out this app? specific website i have designed it newly so on on day one let's say i just tell my friend ram about this he might use this application and he might tell three more people these th people also try to access this application they also like the whole overview of overall concept of this specific application and they also try to advertise it and they tell maybe 10 more people, then again, 100 more people. So likewise, from day one, let's say down the lane, 90 day 90, more people know about it, the traffic which is being generated from different user machines towards this server, keep on increasing. So at the end, what happens is, initially, uh, let's say on day one, only 10 requests, basically, we're hitting the server per second. This server has a maximum capability of handling 1 million requests per second. Down the lane, six months, amount of traffic which started hitting this specific server started increasing. The traffic increase basically represent, resulted in decrease of the performance. So basically on day one, the server was totally free. It was serving all these requests, processing all the requests which were coming at a faster rate. The more overloaded the server became, at the end, the performance of this application was impacted. That is wherein the server admin guy decided that, okay, now it is time that we introduce another server. So let's say this is server one, we introduce server two as well. Now that I have introduced these two servers, let's say, assume that the IP address of this is 172.16.1.1, listening on port 80. This is 172.16.1.2, listening on port 80. And both are hosting my application test-corp.com. Now the question is, how do I actually send the traffic to both these servers, sometimes to this, sometimes to this, so that the resources of both are being utilized and at the end, from a client perspective, the performance is not getting impacted. So in, in the initial days, what used to happen is, this was being achieved by DNS. So basically what was done is, on, on the DNS server, there were two records which was created. 172, 16, 1 1, 172 16, 1 Whenever a DNS query was initiated to the DNS server, the DNS server responded back these two IP addresses in a round robin fashion. So sometimes the user got connected to this server, sometimes it got connected to this server. This was back in 90s. Long time back, this was the solution which was used to perform achieve load balancing. But this was not efficient in the term that, let us assume that at some point of time, this server is down for some reason. Or maybe the service is, this specific service on this server is in hung state. And that time the DNS server responded with this IP address. So what client will do is, client will try to establish a connection to this server. And at the end, the website will not load up. So basically, this specific solution was not effective. So scalability, whenever I say scalability, it means that the capability of adding up 
or dynamically increasing adapting to the increased load without any impact in the existing performance so let us assume that instead of this tns server we add up a load balancing solution so basically our traffic will hit to this load balancer from here it will be decided that traffic should go to which server my intent of adding up more servers should be completely transparent to user it should not impact in any terms so i can basically add up the servers as per my increased load without any existing performance impact this was about scalability now next thing which comes into picture is high availability in today's world any application you you take specifically a banking website can you imagine the kind of impact it can bring to a banking website if that website even goes down for 5 minutes or even for 1 minute during production hours no it will bring a huge impact you as a customer you only think that let us say you have accounts in different banks whichever bank is giving you a better service in terms of ease and have a good performance of their internet application you will be trying to prefer that there is a zero tolerance of downtime which can be accepted from a user perspective one of the driving factors of load balancing is to make sure that your application is basically available all the time so in order to make sure this that the application is available all the time what load balancer will do is it will try to perform the health check of these remote servers which are configured behind the load balancer in a frequent interval so ha basically is the capability of the site to remain available and accessible even with even when one of the service goes down or there is failure with one or more service these two servers going down will not bring any impact to the user because the user's traffic will be going to other servers which are configured behind this ip address so basically the scalability and high availability both this result in predictability predictability can be described basically as the capability of having the confidence and control in how your services are being delivered with re regards to application availability performance and so on so when we talk about any load balancer f5 if you consider as a vendor there are multiple vendors when you talk about load balancer so trix netscaler is there microsoft load balancer is there um, cisco load balancer is there so f5 basically has designed not only a load balancer which you know loads sends the request to different servers but it does a lot more than that so during this course throughout this course we'll be seeing what are the various functionalities which this f5 delivers so basically a solution which controls the traffic flow is something called as application delivery controller application delivery controller basically manages how your applications are being delivered whether at the back end there are two servers there are five servers what should be the load balancing method how your request are being delivered it has the basic capability to direct or redirect requests to appropriate resources so for example let's say uh, you have different servers this server is basically optimized for android users this server is optimized for iphone apple users this server is for general other users so now my requirement is i want to make sure that when any traffic hits my load balancer if a user who is requesting from apple or is using from android phone my request should be directed 
towards the server, which is optimized basically for that purpose. Then load balancer can also intercept, inspect, transform the request which are flowing through it. In here, for example, this side, a request came in as get index dot HTML. So this side, the load balancer can maybe send a modified request as get, let's say, hello dash index dot HTML. So basically this server team has designed the application in such a way that it does not want the end user to type this hello or this hello should not be visible. This hello is basically a directory on the web server, which is not, which should not be visible to the client. So client should only be accessing for something like, let's say app.com slash index dot HTML. And this should get, but whenever this request is generated from the client machine towards the load balancer, the request which actually goes out to the server is get forward slash hello forward slash index dot html then your adc also has a capability to verify the health of server because there is no meaning of sending the application traffic to a server which is actually down so your load balancer needs to make sure that the request which is going to the remote server is in a healthy state so it on a periodic basis it performs the health of health check of the backend servers and only when it finds that the server is in healthy state it then sends the application traffic towards it uh, uh vineet yes uh sorry to interrupt i think uh, this uh, meeting will uh, get disconnected in another uh, one uh, minute or uh, so so i'm just seeing the remaining meeting time there so yeah i think uh, that's because it's 40 minutes uh, and then i think we started late right so yeah. um so just had a query before it gets cut just want to know if uh, uh, you will be sending us the uh, pdf and the recording uh, to our email id uh this recording i'll i'll check with the team and uh, probably okay. they will sh share it with you okay and uh, uh, how about the pdf as, as long as PDF is required, I can only give you the certification guides, uh, which are available also available on internet. I will share the link with you. Um, and okay. this course is totally, um, you know, designed in terms of, um, I'll be giving the running notes. If you have any specific doubts, you can ask me then and there itself. If I some there is something that I'm not able to clear, I'll try to give you any examples and basically we'll first try to understand the concepts and then implement it on F5. We'll try to build the box from scratch, how when a new box comes in, how you configure it. And from therein, we'll see each and every parameters. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this course, I will be basically giving you a specific set of tasks, which you can build your own lab and practice it on your on that. Okay.